the internet will tell you railroad track is the hardest material on the planet and you'll burn up all your blades and it's impossible to cut and it's work hardened on the top it makes it really difficult and I'm just I just wanted to let you guys know that I cut this with a normal bandsaw blade at the same speed and maybe just lowered my feed rate a little bit than I would for mild steel cut it just fine no problems the interesting thing is I'm not you you can't see it on camera I mean I can just barely see it but I can actually see the layers from where it's work hard you can see it's kind of mushroomed out here from you know the thousands of pounds that are that we're constantly running over it it's you know it mushroomed off more on this side it's not completely false information it is harder and you can tell that these layers are definitely there but it's not so hard that you have to get a special bandsaw blade or cut this thing with a cutoff wheel or anything actually the blade on my bandsaw right now is pretty clapped out i used it for a bunch of stainless steel not too long ago and it cut this just fine That's gonna be tight. So as it turns out, this stuff isn't that fun to tap. It kind of feels like tapping crappy stainless, how it just sort of doesn't feel like it's cutting, just feels like it's grabbing onto the tap, trying to break it the whole time.
would like to heat treat these three parts. These two are W1 and this one is 4140 annealed. And while we're doing it, I'd also like to do some experimenting with this scrap piece of 4140. One of them I'm gonna wrap in stainless steel foil and the other one I'm not and I just wanna compare the oxidation on both. I'm also going to drop a small piece of paper in there and I think the idea is that when it gets hot enough the paper lights on fire and burns until it uses up all the oxygen inside the foil. So I wanted to show you guys how I programmed this for 4140. I just got the procedure off of the internet so hopefully it's right. This means it's gonna ramp up 375 degrees Fahrenheit per hour until it gets to 1250 degrees. And then from there, it's gonna ramp up as fast as possible to 1550, which is the final temperature, and then soak for 15 minutes. While that's in the oven, I wanted to do a couple tests on this railroad track. Based on what I could find on the internet, this is 1080 series steel, 1080, 1084. And according to the machinery's handbook, it's used for farm equipment, uh, plows and discs and things like that. Inherently pretty tough stuff. But what I wanna do is I wanna figure out if you didn't have a heat treat oven, what you can expect from this in the way of hardness if you were just using a torch in your home shop. So what I've done, you can see where I cut these sections off and I've annealed them all the way. I heated them up with a torch till they were cherry red and non-magnetic. And then I let them cool down slowly at room temperature. And right now the registering on the Rockwell scale of 30, 30 C, the thing about the Rockwell tester is the C scale is only for harder materials. So even though this is just a relative measurement, 30 C, because this could very well be into what would be the B scale of the Rockwell test. You use a carbide ball instead of a diamond for a penetrator, and I don't have one of those. So this is really just for reference. Right now it's registering 30 C, and we're gonna heat treat it. We're gonna heat it up to cherry red until it's non-magnetic, and then we're gonna quench it in 150 degree vegetable oil and see what kind of improvements we see. Okay, so here's the heat treated piece of railroad track. And all I did was grind the scale off so I could get an accurate Rockwell test on it. Forty six Rockwell C. The carbon content of ten eighty four steel is only 0.75 to 0.9 ish. So there's not a ton of carbon in it. So the hardest that I'm able to get it was 46 Rockwell.
So this is the one that I had in there by itself. And this is the one with the stainless steel foil. And this is just a light wire wheel. And you can tell that the stainless steel definitely helps. When it was all said and done, this ended up at 47 Rockwell. It was 55 right out of the oven. And then I put it back in the oven at 700 degrees for a little over an hour and brought it back down to 47 Rockwell. This one, however, had some issues. The problem was it took me so long to fish this one out of the stainless steel that this one was significantly cooled by the time I put it in the oil. Not to mention the fact this one had already raised the temperature of the oil. So we still ended up at just under 50 Rockwell, but nowhere near as hard as 4140 can get right out of the oven. There's almost no residual oxidation on here after a little scotch Bright and wire wheel. And I have to say the stainless works surprisingly well, better than I thought it would. So let's put this thing together and I'll show you guys what it does. Hossfeld calls this the bulldozer die, and they sell it for their number two Hossfeld bender. And it bends tight 90s in flat stock up to a quarter inch thick. The problem is it's almost $400. This is another one of those machines where the tooling cost is much higher than the machine cost itself. So I thought I'd make one, and it seemed like a pretty reasonable candidate for the railroad track. But I think I'm about out of time on this one. We'll pick this up on one of the next ones. Thanks for watching, guys.